Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life, thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Capricorn Solar Eclipse. This eclipse is phenomenal for a few reasons, and one of the reasons that stands out to me the most is the fact that this is actually the last solar eclipse and the last new moon for 2019. It ends it on a positive note for most of us. Now we're going to be diving really deep into the details of this chart and I also have my cards pulled up. I'll be working with the Rider Waite and the Lennerman, also the Wild Offering and the Wisdom of the Avalon by Colette Baron reed So those cards will be linked down below. If you want to, you can jump to the timestamps, which I will pin down in the comments. Just a little bit about me before we dive into the chart for those of you guys that are brand new to my channel. Again, my name is Jess and I'm the creator of Bahati Life Apothecary. I've dedicated most of my life to the study of astrology and intuitive studies and tarot. And you will see me blend the best of both of those worlds when it comes to my intuitive knowledge, my intuitive gifts, and also my studies of the astrology charts and the energy of the planet. I believe that if you know how to work with the energy of the planets, you can make them work for you, not against you, and that's something that you'll see within my chart readings, that no challenge is too great of an obstacle that we can't work with and make it work for us in some way, shape, or form, okay? So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into this chart. The first thing that is standing out to me when I'm looking at the chart is Capricorn. I mean, come on, the new moon is happening in the sign of Capricorn, but Capricorn energy has had our attention for quite some time. And the reason why is because Saturn and Pluto have been moving through the sign of Capricorn, going retrograde, moving direct, going retrograde, moving direct. And then also Jupiter joined into this energy work and Jupiter is a planet of abundance and expansion and now is highlighting these things. What Saturn and Pluto have been working to dismantle and to destroy, Jupiter now says, okay, boom, here it is. It's kind of like popping a um, bottle rocket. Is that the right thing? I'm not sure. I'm going to call it a bottle ro rocket, popping it, throwing it into the mix and expanding it so that it's in our our, you know, for 2020 vision. Like it's literally what we can see right here and now. We're seeing this a lot when it comes to government and politics. I'm not gonna dive into that because I have plenty of videos that I've talked about what we can experience and what we will see and what we will witness and my predictions have been going on for years. Why years? Because this transit is not just overnight. It's something that's been building up, okay? So the next thing that we can look out for and that we can watch and expect is a lot of changes going on when it comes to big, big businesses. Right after, a few months after I've been saying it, you guys, keep your eyes on big businesses. This was when Jupiter moved into the sign of Capricorn, when it originally moved into the sign of Capricorn. Then I started getting tagged in notifications. You guys were showing me, look, just Fashion Nova, um, a magnifying glass on it. Forever 21 has a magnifying glass on it. Wawa. I mean, the list kept going on and on. So thank you guys for those who have been tagging me in those posts because you guys know I'm a Virgo and I just stay focused on what's in front of me and that is is nine times out of 10 an astrology chart, the tarot cards, or my clients, okay? So those are some things, I'm not gonna go into detail with that, with um, the politics and big, biz big businesses because I've been mentioning it. It's been pretty much a broken record. But when it comes to your personal life, I am seeing a lot of changes, positive changes when it comes to your living arrangements, your home environment, your money, your sense of security, your sense of belonging, personal boundaries, and also relationships. Those are some areas of your life and my life that I'm seeing really starting to expand themselves and to make themselves known. I really wanna tell you guys that as you are stepping into these next level relationships, especially romantic, but even uh, platonic relationships, you have really truly I feel like for a majority of you guys, you guys have really truly mastered um, boundaries and what, where you start, where you end, and where the next person starts and where they end. This is also not just platonic relationships, this is also your family bonds and any type of relationship that's really intimate um, and in your space that you are welcoming in. I feel like for many of you guys, you're realizing that some of your most intimate relationships, like your family, your romantic relationships, your best friends, are the relationships where you're learning 
where you have where you're learning that those are the ones that need the strongest boundaries and that can be the hardest thing so with saturn and pluto moving through the sign of capricorn and capricorn ruling you know internal strength and you being a, a force to be reckoned with all by yourself learning how to be mature learning how to be responsible learning how to speak up for yourself having this okay this is the line that should not be crossed and you're not saying this in a way that is harsh or forceful or cold I'm actually seeing, because with um, the North Node and the sign of Cancer, I'm seeing so many of you guys being very forward and direct with your boundaries and being very forward and direct with what it is that you want. You're learning how to straddle the balance of articulating your needs without being offensive, without hurting anyone's feelings unnecessarily. And I feel like that is a part of your maturity. That is a part of your growth. Speaking of that, I'm feeling and I'm seeing that with this new moon, your mind, your perspective, your vision, it's like the 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 intentions that you've been setting and the things that is that you have been wanting, they felt like wishes. You know what I mean? Like it felt like a fairy tale, it felt like a picture book where you're it was the greatest picture and the greatest vision that you could have for your life, right? And you would see it and it feels like a fairy tale. But now at this at this full moon, it's like you're gonna get a download or you're getting information or you're coming up with a plan or you're setting the intention that that fairy tale vision no longer feels like a fairy tale. It now becomes an actual reality. It actually, you have the tools, the resources to make it work, to build a plan, to build a structure so that it can actually rise up from everything that has been destroyed, everything that's been dismantled in your personal life. I honestly have to say, you guys, the same areas of your life that you have experienced the most struggle and the most strife with are the same areas now that you are having a breath of fresh air. It's not temporary, temporarily, temporary temporary it's something that is permanent and lasting and that you can count on it is it shows up for you it is always there this is a direct reflection of your own energy change now you know when people say when you set intentions you have to be the energy or match the vibration of what it is that you're seeking to achieve that's actually why 2019 was really tough on so many people is because you as a whole it wasn't just your external environment that was shifting and changing it was mostly it was you you were under fire you were under pressure you were that diamond or that piece of coal that was being put under all this pressure all this heat and transforming into a diamond so knowing your worth, knowing your value, you're deciding and you're saying, listen, in order to approach me, in order to put your hands on me, in order to converse, in order to invest, you need to have what it takes. I don't want just any investor. I want someone that I can count on that if I'm going to do business with you, if I'm going to do this contract, that I know that you're not going to drop the ball and that I'm not linking up with mediocre. That's not just business. This is relationships. This is all types of contracts because if you look at it, anything that we have in this world, we have a relationship with it. It's either building you up or tearing you down. And for the majority of you guys, we have learned, listen, I am not settling for less. I don't want mediocre. I don't want lackluster at best. I want the best because that is my goal for myself and also for my world, right? So as I'm looking at this chart, the, the next thing that stands out to me is the fact that Jupiter, the planet of abundance and blessing, is sitting directly, almost directly on top of this new moon solar eclipse. Now, solar eclipses are huge portals for new energy, for fresh energy fresh beginnings and it, I love that because this is the last solar eclipse of 2019 that starts the trend for 2020. So this is a totally new fresh beginning and what I love is what it was that I was saying that this is in the same area of your life that 2019 was be beating you up probably the most. The same end 2018. This is the same area of your life that you're like how is this going to get evolved? How is this going to get better? And you're going to see it by setting your intention, but also watching things kind of manifest and materialize. Not only are you setting intention for this wish fulfillment, like I was saying, this is actual tangible evidence of this thing approaching in your life. What I will say is that there is this recipe for surprise. The reason why this is, is because Uranus, currently retrograde, is moving through the sign of Taurus, and Uranus is squaring off 
with Venus ruling the things that is that we value the most, which is definitely changing, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And it's also trying the solar eclipse and the planet Jupiter, right? So what is so magnificent about this and what is so spectacular and dazzling about this, Jupiter and Uranus are coming into alignment, almost like hitting the jackpot in your personal life, but you wanna make sure that you can handle the magnitude of the blessing that is about to come into your life. Now, for some of you guys are like, Jess, yes, I've been wanting this for a minute. I've been wanting this since before 2018. 2018, 2019, whooped my ass. What do you mean, am I ready? Can I handle this blessing that's gonna come into my life? This is exactly what it was that I was waiting for. But the reality is, is like, if you think about it, and if you look at the statistics, there are people that, you know, play lottery and they want to win the lottery and they're like, yes, I would have all of this money and this is gonna fix all of my problems and then they have a transit like this within their chart and they strike it big and they get a lump sum of money that falls into their lap and somehow, some way, same, some shape or form, I don't know what happens, but it's the weight of that and the magnitude of all the money that comes into their life. They can't hold on to it. They lose it really quickly. They don't know how to invest it and it ends up bringing a lot of problems. Uh, they were actually better off without the money than when they received it. And that's what Capricorn energy doesn't want for you. It says, if you're about to hit the jackpot, I need you to be ready to be able to carry the weight of this blessing that's going to come into your life. Let's say it's a, a relationship, right? Let's say you guys are really, some of you guys are gonna end up getting married. Some of you guys are really meeting, you know, the person that, or if you're not meeting, you're cementing the bond between you and the person that you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. So those are things that it is that you've been setting intention for and that you've been wanting, but you have to remember like there's no, you know, end all be all, you know, quick fix to things. So being in a relationship with that person, you wanna make sure that those old triggers that you've been seeing 2018, 2019 are not gonna get triggered when the person of your dreams reaches out to give you a hug or to love you or to show you how much they value you and you are rejecting it because you yourself don't feel like you're worthy of receiving it, right? So you're setting these intentions. It seems like a fairy tale, but that fairy tale is going to make itself a reality. The prince is gonna ride up to the tower. He's gonna climb up and be like, look, I'm here to save you and vice versa. The princess is gonna ride up to the princess that's been waiting in the tower, or the prince is gonna ride up to the, to the tower and wait for the prince and call him down and call him out or text him and be like, yo, where you at? I'm down here, I'm waiting for you. Let's go, you know, let's do this. Let's go on a date, let's get married, whatever the case is. So I'm just seeing that it's, there's this fairy tale vision of what it is that you've been hoping for and wishing for, but Capricorn energy and Saturn energy always says, listen, we want you to be ready for this. We want you to be not only capable, but we want you to be able to thrive in this and feel good with it. So what I will say is at the time of the solar eclipse, this is when you wanna set intention for this new life, this new you. That's what you wanna set intention for. You don't wanna wait until January 1st of 2020. You wanna do it at the time of the solar eclipse because a solar eclipse like this is literally, it's such a breath of fresh air, but it's also life changing. One of the last things I wanna say about this solar eclipse is the fact that Venus is moving through the sign of Aquarius. Venus rules our value, beauty, aesthetic, money, and when she's moving through the sign of Aquarius, it really is kind of taking a, a, a step back and saying, you know what, I think my priorities are shifting here. I think I kind of want something different. I want to infuse newness and uniqueness and to examine what is right for me because maybe what I thought I wanted, I'm just gonna tweak it just a little bit. And at the time of the solar eclipse, there is the opportunity to tweak your intention, to tweak yourself, to tweak your life. And really what I'm seeing for so many of you guys is like an actual cleansing where you're looking at all of the things that it is that you hold valuable to you and close to your heart. And you're like, okay, does this, when I hold on to this, for example, let's say it's a crystal. When I hold on to this crystal, does this, it's like Marie Kondo, is that her name? But 
does this bring me value? Does this bring me joy? Does this make me happy? Or when I look at this, does it carry a bad memory or something that whenever I look at it, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm actually seeing for so many of you guys, you're doing that for not only physical things, but also relationships. I don't see it as a public announcement. I just see it as a drifting away from a conscious drifting away from the things that really don't it's not that they have bad intention but they just don't give you life they just kind of make you feel a little uncomfortable or you feel like you've outgrown it a little bit or you just don't vibe with the same people you don't want the same type of conversations you don't want to read the same types of books you don't want to listen to the same type of music you don't want to watch the same type of movies it's like your perspective what you are attracted to those things are changing and that's a direct reflection of mercury moving through the sign of sagittarius venus moving through the sign of aquarius and also mars wanting more from your experience and using your energy in a way that is strong constructive and powerful those are things that i'm seeing within the chart that I had to mention. Last thing, last thing I promise you guys, you know I'm thorough AF, but the last thing that I'm seeing is the fact that the part of fortune is falling in the sign of Libra, right? And Libra is a sign that rules relationships and partnerships, but she also wants to create harmony and balance in all areas of your life. The biggest thing, oh my God, that stands out to me with this is the balance of work and play. A lot of you guys have been grinding. I can relate to that. And I actually set the intention in 2019 that I was going to relax a little bit, that I was gonna write my book, which I did do. And then after that, that I would chill. I would enter into a space where I was, you know, a little bit more empress energy and receiving. And when I tell you, as soon as I did that, it was like the gates opened up for my shadow work to begin. So it didn't feel like I was able to relax at all. At the time of this solar eclipse, this is a, an energy shift, okay? For a lot of you guys, you really were either doing a lot of nothing because you were healing and recovering and maybe you physically were not able to do it, or you were doing everything. This is not something that you need to apologize for or that you should feel guilty for. This is just another example of what's going on in the planets and the energy that it is that we've been working with that we can set intention all we want but sometimes we have to work in alignment with what's going on in the stars so not only am i seeing this beautiful balance of fresh air and a vacation or a brief pause that actually you can enjoy but i'm also seeing uh connections and blessings when it comes to relationships and partnerships and the reason why that is is because not that you guys for those of you guys that are single, not that you you know couldn't do it by your own or that not that you're not independent, it's just that you've been taking on the burden a lot. A lot of the work, a lot of the weight of responsibility and commitment has been falling on your shoulders. You've been doing it solo dolo for a minute and the universe works with balance. It wants to restore balance. So it wants to bring into your life not only the struggle, which you can do, of course, no one's saying that you can't do it, no one's saying that you're not strong, but it says, listen, if you're going to do the work, or if you're gonna have to do the work, then we wanna set intention that you have a strong partner by your side that is going to not only help you, but make the day-to-day -day life way more enjoyable. All right, so I love that, and I am really excited to get my hands on these cards. I'm gonna pause this video, I'm gonna bless and break my deck, and then I'm gonna shuffle, and let's see what shows up for us. Okay, my love, so we have my tarot deck here. I'm working with the traditional Rider weight. I usually don't shuffle on camera, but we're doing that today, which I am open for some new fresh energy, of course, naturally. I will say that one thing that's been standing out to me as I'm looking at the chart, um, you guys can't see me doing this right now, but I'm looking at the chart while I'm shuffling the cards. There's a few things that are standing out to me when it comes to the symbols, and the symbol is Venus moving through the sign of Aquarius, and also Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus. Now, I realize, and I know, that the solar eclipse is happening in the sign of Capricorn, but this energy is standing out to me right now. And what I will say is that it feels like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, we have the magician here at the bottom of the deck. And then my cards are twisted back and forth, but that's just how I roll. Yep, magician card again. What I will say too is that it feels like a wild card. It feels like the word that just came through is an outlier something that is so different from the, from the rest, 
something that is so different from the norm. And that kind of makes sense again too because Venus moving to the sign of Aquarius and Uranus moving to the sign of Taurus. Uranus rules the planet of surprise. Taurus wants pre predictability and stable and reliable. Venus moving to the sign of Aquarius really does work with eccentric and different, ruled by the energy of Uranus and that would make sense that it would be the word is outlier. Yeah, some of you guys have been dealing with a lot of anxiety, a lot of tension in the mind, in your head, wondering, okay, what is going to happen next? What is the next information that's going to come through that's going to be the, the, the deal breaker? That's what just came through. What's going to be the next deal break? The, deal, the next deal breaker? What am I going to hear? What are they going to say? What am I going to do? And this worrying of information and you trying to figure it out and you trying to do the research and put all the pieces of the puzzle is actually what is, is making you anxious. It's actually disconnecting you from your in, intuition, from your feelings and the North Node falling in the sign of Cancer, moving through the sign of Cancer. This, When you try to figure things out by yourself and then you try to rush to that end result, it's like you're disconnecting from your direction and your purpose which is showing you where it is that you ultimately where it is that you ultimately belong. See? The Page of Pentacles just dropped out. And this is slow, slow it down. Slow down your steps just a little bit. That's something that we see a lot when it comes to Capricorn energy. You want to take your time. You don't want to rush to the to the finish line. We really want to take our time because we don't want to miss a detail. We don't want to miss a step. We want to make sure that everything is solid. Do you see how the Eight of Swords just came up and the Eight of Cups? These are things that you've been feeling really anxious about letting go of and releasing. Yes, this feels like a direct threat to your security, to your worth, to the things that is that you value the most, to your family, to your, to your stability. And you feel like, well, why am I being called to let it go? For some of you guys, it's relationships. Remember what I was saying before? This is this, the eclipse definitely for relationships. And I, I truly believe um, that anything is we have a relationship with it just like it's not just platonic or romantic relationships or our family it's my relationship with my cards my relationship with my clients my relationship with the world my relationship with youtube is it healthy is it constructive those are things that you know yeah see that's this brings me directly to Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus. Emperor wants stability, security, and the Hierophant has the rules and the regulations to help you to get there. And I feel like that's actually what you're connecting with at the time of this solar eclipse is setting the intention for you knowing, you know, what is ultimately yours, you standing up and being mature in that. It, this is not a, an age thing. This is an emotional maturity. This is a mental maturity, a spiritual maturity, stepping into that personal power. And I'm also seeing that some of you guys are really getting um, guidance and clarity. See, you're collaborating. You're connecting with other people of like-minded. You can't connect with people who don't have what you want, ultimately. Some of you guys actually have to step out of your comfort zones and connect with people. Like I was saying before, with Venus moving through the sign of Aquarius, and um, Uranus moving to the sign of Taurus, you really have to step out of your comfort zone and connect with people who are different from you, but they are excelling in the areas that you are going to excel in. This is going to help you to make a firmer foundation for yourself because what have they done? What were the rules that they followed? What were the rules that they broke? What worked for them? What didn't? Ask those questions. Okay, let me go ahead and break the deck. Yeah, some of you guys have so much anxiety and so much tension. Each one of these swords represents a thought, a mindset, and, and a limiting belief that has been holding you back and making you feel like you're not prosperous, that it can't happen, or that every moment, every experience is working against you, when in reality, it's working to build you up. The one thing that I want to say too is that 2018, 2019, were years that really stressed a lot of people out and stretched a lot of people out. And the thing is, is because they, the planets and the divine wanted you to be malleable. They wanted you to learn. They wanted you to grow fast. Two years doesn't seem like it's fast, but in the eyes of the universe, it's, you know, standing in the blink. It's like a blink in the eye, you know, of time. So it's, it seems like you... You know, it seems like forever, but the reality is, is that you've learned a lot in a small amount of time and it's the emperor keeps showing up. Let me go ahead and set this up for you guys. Yeah. 
Same thing. Oh my goodness. Okay, perfect. Okay, so one thing that's standing out to me, yes, these are the things that we're leaving behind in the past is the Five of Swords, the Five of Pentacles, and also the Knight of Swords. This is, it's like a double-edged sword as soon as I see this. I see how people have hurt you and how much that left you feel abandoned and scarred and wounded. And I'm also seeing how you took other people, how they hurt you, and you hurt yourself with the memory of it, with the experience, replaying it in your head, and also internalizing it and saying like, well, what did I do? What did I do to you? I did not deserve that. Either you had that conversation with them or you're having that conversation with yourself, which is like, I didn't deserve that. Why did I receive that? And it's your inability to understand that some things are out of your control or some things you know, provide are literally there for a lesson and you internalize it like a sponge, you absorb it. So many of you guys are sensitive. I feel the energy of empathetic and sympathetic people who really are healers here on earth and would never do that to anyone. That's the other thing too is that I'm hearing. It's like, I would never do that to you. I would never do that to you. I respect you and I deserve respect. And somehow, some way, you, th this person that, and it's not that you think that you're better than them, but you can see how you could have helped them. You could have seen how you made their life better knowing that why wouldn't they choose you? Why wouldn't they be on your um, playing field? Like why wouldn't they be on your side? Why would they do to you what they did? Why would they fire you? Why would they cheat? Why would they lie? Why would they, why would they talk shit? They ended up hurting themselves and ultimately I feel like that mindset that you have that in your brain where you're replaying this, it's actually now hurting you and you don't even realize it. So when you have these new opportunities coming in, these new blessings coming in, you're almost expecting the same end result or you don't give to it in the same way. And that's why you guys, boundaries are everything, right? It's not only about pushing people away and being like, oh, oh my poor cactus. It's not only about pushing people away and pushing them out of your life and being like, oh, this is healthy boundaries. Because a healthy boundary is you receiving what it is that you want for yourself that makes you feel good. Um, and then you also protecting yourself from getting too much of something because that would no longer feel good. But either way, you open and control the, the door that is guarding your garden and protecting your energy so a boundary is not you exclusively locking out the entire world and being like oh this is a healthy boundary no at that point it becomes an unhealthy boundary because you've locked yourself in you're isolated and now you're stressed out now you're alone now you're abandoned right and then you have this mindset in your in your brain saying well i don't need anybody or i don't need that i don't need him i don't need her he can go you know mess f, f himself you know what i mean that's so that type of mindset and that really is a detriment to your energy and it doesn't feel good and these are things that if you were honest with yourself um and these are things that are definitely changing and that we're leaving behind in 2019. it is and take it for a lesson take it as the biggest lesson now for some reason i really feel called to shuffle from the Lennerman deck and i can tell you guys I've really been gravitating towards the Lennerman lately to the point where I genuinely don't see myself leaving the house without it. If I run down to the street to get coffee or take Franklin for a walk, I won't, I won't bring it. But yeah, so much of this is for your personal power, for you to you know, gain strength. It's letters. Um, letters of affirmation, that's something that just came through. Affirmations, things that you're saying to yourself, things that you're writing down, journaling it out putting it out there and burning it, releasing it, letting go. And that's going to be a part of your personal power. You stepping into your personal power, you releasing it and seeing it for exactly what it was and realize that when negative things happen to you or bad things happen to you or things that disappoint you, I should say, things that make you feel sad, don't take it personally. Never take it personally, right? Let me just shuffle from the Letterman because the rest of the cards are singing right now. They are singing the energy that's coming through um from them yeah i'm seeing a lot of luck a lot of it's so funny because it's it's it almost seems like it this event whatever this was was maybe you had a friendship it's like something you guys know when i start rubbing my nose it's because spirit is speaking like that's always been a sign for me or my my head tingles but if you see me rub, rubbing my nose again that's why it's almost like a split decision 
um, like a five minute decision, it changed everything. It's almost like one small thing changed the course of everything. It's like one word, one text message, one thing that they said, the thing that they didn't say, that one small detail is what changed the course of everything. That one left turn, that one right turn, everything changed. And it's like, that was your luck. It's not luck in the sense that it was good or bad luck. It's just that was a circumstance that everything kind of came together or fell apart, right? So that's something that I really wanted to, to I guess Spirit wanted you to, to see. The other thing that I'm seeing at the energy around us now is kind of like what it was that I was saying, which is, you know, it's about resting and lowering your guard a little bit and allowing healing to happen, but not healing in the sense that, so I have an issue, a conflict with the word healing lately. I work with words, right? Each word is, it could be one word, but it comes with it. It's like a symbol for a larger message. And one word that I've been moving away from lately actually is healing. And I've been moving into the word, moving healing into recovery. And pretty much what this is, is learning how to work whatever it was that was broken, whatever it was that was hurt, make it strong again. And that's what I'm seeing here at the top for, for, for us is at the time of the solar eclipse, you are being patient with your recovery. You are being patient with yourself as you reopen to the potential. You're being patient as you reopen um, to sharing, to being vulnerable, vulnerable again, to believing, to having faith. These are things that are being recovered right now. It's not just your heart and the wounds of your heart. It's your in your mind and how you're thinking it's all aspects of your life you're being patient and learning how to recover the muscle of faith learning how to recover and strengthen your heart um your vision allowing people in allowing yourself to be present in other people's lives certain relationships they are recovering they're in recovery your relationship with yourself is in recovery your relationship with the divine or with universe because your faith has really been tested with that your ability to manifest your your self-worth those are things that are in recovery healing is like an instant gratification almost where it almost feels like with the word healing it happens overnight but when we use the word recover we we understand that this is a new life that we're building for ourselves we are strengthening our lives every day by the actions that is that we're taking that's why i'm using the word recovery healing would be amazing but in reality it doesn't always happen even if healing does happen, you still have to go into recovery mode to learn how to work with that muscle, that same muscle that was healed, and keep it so that it's strengthened, it stays strength, stays strong, and that you don't hurt it again. And that's what I'm seeing right now at the time of this solar eclipse, and a message that you need to receive right now, which is to be patient with yourself. Be patient and, com and compassionate, because when you allow yourself the time and the space to recover and to give yourself the time to not rush into having faith again um, or loving again or expressing yourself again or you know trying to build this you know your business your brand your youtube channel write that book when you give yourself the chance the space to and the time ultimately to take baby steps towards it you are being compassionate with yourself that is an act of of um I don't want to say erratic, but reckless self-love. Like it almost seems crazy to give yourself this time and the space. The fact that you would think you have the audacity to think that you have the time. Of course you do. Universe is waiting for you. The divine is waiting for you to step into your pur purpose. The divine that says you don't have to rush through this. We understand. No one is telling you to rush, but you are maybe the rest of the world. But if you were to sit with um, the divine if you were to sit with your higher self you would hear yourself you would hear the divine say to you you have all the time in the world because you are precious because you are loved unconditionally and we want you to enjoy the process and we also want you to do it right and we also want you to make mistakes that's why we don't want to rush you we don't, we don't want to rush you through this because you are going to make mistakes it's not going to be one stop shop get it right the first time you we actually love you so much that we'll give you the chance and the space to make mistakes because we don't want you to have this pressure on yourself to strive for per perfection. That's how much the universe loves you and will wait for you because they are factoring in the fact that you are a human being and that you're not meant to be a robot and to get it right, 99.9. .9. That's how much you are loved. That's what it is that I'm seeing for you guys right now. The energy right now, truthfully, here is what it is that I'm seeing, yes. 
Oh my god, I love this. This is um, Seven of Swords, um, the Emperor card, and the Four of Wands. Now, this is so interesting to me because with the Seven of Swords, I'm getting the word selfish and self-absorbed, but I'm seeing it as, yeah, but I like need this. Like this, I don't see the Seven of Swords in this case as a bad thing. I see this as, yeah, but I need this. This is my time. It seems like I'm stealing time, but I'm not. This is me. This is actually some of you guys are getting into your heads a, a bit more. And you are learning, you're discovering what your intention is. You're discovering what you want. You're creating a plan for yourself. That's ultimately the message of the Seven of Swords, but um, people misconstrue it and they're like, oh, this is cheating, this is lying, you know, you know manip manipulation. It can be that, but it's not always that. The Seven of Swords is about actually divinity. It's Seven is connected to the sign, the number of perfection, and swords is connected to intellect. So this is perfect mindset, perfect, um, perfect plan, perfect intention, perfect. This is my will. This is what I want. This is why I'm doing what it is that I'm doing, and that's why you guys have to be a little selfish. That's why you guys have to have that firm boundary and that stability and the maturity to know who you are and what it is that you want, because this is what it is that you're aiming for. The Four of Wands. I love that. I love that so much. These, okay, yes. The Lover's card is here at the base. Five of Wands and the Page of Swords. Interestingly enough with this, I'm seeing a lot of you guys getting out in the dating field. Um, you know, dating again for the first time after years of maybe not wanting to or not enjoying it. Now all of a sudden it starts to become a little enjoyable. Mostly if you get out of your head and back into your body. You know, just the fact that you're a human being and enjoying the process and not expecting anyone else to get it right the first time. Allowing people to make mistakes and allowing yourself to make mistakes. But also I'm seeing, um, creating a plan creating a plan of action and I'm also seeing a lot of things trying to get their hands on you, trying to, you know, um, collab, not only say collaborate, but they want to choose you, they want to work with you, they want to, so it's ultimately, you have to again, go back to this energy, the center of this, at the solar eclipse, this is about you knowing who you are, the maturity of you knowing who you are, and then saying, listen, I'm going to have to be a little selfish with my time, it seems like I'm selfish, but in reality, I'm figuring out what I want so that I can decide ultimately what is it I'm going to give to you. So that's what it is that I'm seeing here is this kind of back and forth movement and momentum. And then moving forward into the future, I'm actually seeing surprise. Um, the tower card is here as well as the page of cups and the eight of swords. Now the tower card was reversed. So I feel like this thing that's going to manifest um, around the time of the solar eclipse or because of the solar eclipse, it's something that surprises you but it really wasn't truly a surprise if you looked if you took a step back you would be like well of course this manifested because i was setting intention for it um but i feel like how i was saying that you really have to know and be ready for you to hit the jackpot when the jackpot happens <clears throat> and when it occurs and when you receive this bounty are you ready to hold on to it are you ready to carry the weight of it or are you going to be triggered are you going to somehow waste away all of the blessing that's about to come your way. Create a plan. Literally create, take the time away, get that fresh energy, that fresh perspective, like I was saying at the beginning when we were pulling the chart. Take the time away to come up with a plan of action that's going to help you to hold on to this blessing that's gonna come into your life or there is a potential for you to lose it. So when I say that, I don't want you guys to think again, but Jess, you just said that it's, so the compass, yes, you guys are being directed. This reminds me of the North Node, which is falling in the sign of Cancer. This is has everything to do with exactly where it is that you belong. Exactly where it is that you belong. All of these things that have been happening to you, it's like, it seems so dark, it seems so impossible. It always seems impossible, but you have to keep your eyes on the North Star because it's, it's guiding you to where it is that you belong. A more evolved, higher cir circumstance, a more higher evolved um, experience, relationships, business, money. So like I was saying with the tower card, it's not that you could lose it all. Like that puts a lot of pressure when I say that, but to you, especially after saying that it's not about getting it right 99.9% .9 of the time and per striving for perfection and holding on to things. It's just that, you know, you wanna make you want to you want to be open enough to so that when you receive the blessing and evolved enough and calm i actually feel like 
you know, the things that have been worrying, worrying you, when they start to manifest, right, you'll get triggered by it. So when it shows up, it's almost like, it's not that it'll be removed, but it, it, if you're not calm with the blessing, if you don't have peace with it, you're gonna have discord and imbalance, and that is going to come from you. So you want to challenge these old thinking, this old thinking that says, oh, I'm not worth you know, being charging my clients this. Oh, I'm not worth having someone there for me, or I'm not worth, you know, this love and romance or whatever. So when it presents itself to you, which is this vision that you have for yourself that it is that you ultimately deserve, the imbalance comes from within, where you, and that chaos starts to to erupt in your mind and your spirit, and you start to fight with it. So it's not that you lose it permanently it just makes it harder for you to enjoy it to receive it and it makes it harder for other people to give to you in the way that it is that you actually deserve so i want you guys to hear that and the north node the falling in the sign of uh cancer has been here for a minute and this is saying like keep your eyes on the fact that this feeling that you have you have to not fight for it but you have to strive for it you have to keep your eyes on it because this is where it is that you belong and despite the obstacles despite the chaos that's going on around you it's you know all of this has been transforming you into a diamond it's been transforming your experience so that you can actually receive because if we were to take you as you were and drop you into the blessing i feel like you would be so scared by it. It would be like a person who would be who wants to go to Paris or wants to go to this, you know, beautiful land and you know, they don't speak the language, they don't eat the food, they don't they're not their bodies aren't a, a, accustomed to the food yet. You your body, your skin can't take the sunlight or whatever it is. So, it seems like this is a paradise, but when you go in there, you're getting sick by the food, you can't communicate with people, you are getting your skin's getting burned by the sun. So, these are things that it's like you have to go through them now, these different experiences and build a tolerance to it because this is going to be your new normal. And then when it's your new normal, you're literally living in paradise. You're living in your dream. So one last card from the Lenormand. Yeah, see, it's the Clover card again. Someone's about to strike big luck, big, big luck in relationships and money and career and an idea, news coming in. And this, the woman here represents, um, in the Lenormand, it represents um, literally a woman, but I'm actually connecting this right now to Empress Energy. It's about being able to receive, because she has Venus sitting right over her um, uh, sacral chakra, and Venus moving to the sign of Aquarius. It's it's really, it's, new, it's newness, it's new energy. Some of you guys are actually on TV, or you're in film, or people are seeing you, observing you, and you're about to really expand. You're really about to explode in a good way. And you need to be strong for this. You need to be prepared for this. Some of you guys are really are in the music industry or on TV and or reality TV shows or whatever. You're, the eyes are watching you. Maybe you have a YouTube channel or whatever it is. Your personal life is becoming public life. And this is everything that is that you want. Everything that is that you've been wanting, that you've been waiting for. But if you're not ready for it, it's going to feel abrasive to you. It's going to feel like a burden. It's not going to feel like a blessing. It'll feel like a curse. You need to be strong. You need to be strong. You need to be ready. The, the fox, see what I'm saying? The fox, this card is all about being um you know creating a plan what is your intention what do you you have to be a little selfish with your time and what you're asking for you might have to ask for a lot more maybe that's what's going on for some of you guys too is that you need to ask for more and that requires a lot of strength from you to know that you actually deserve more and as soon as you do as soon as you do ask for it especially with the writer here and the woman and the clover you you'll get it some of you guys are really truly being guided to ask for more than what it is that you're ultimately receiving because without you, the show could not go on. And if it and if it does, it wouldn't be the same. And mark my words on that. Yes, see, it's a disruption. Oh my God, I'm about to tune out. So this is disruption. It's a disruption, a deviation from the normal. It's a disruption from what it is that you were um, initially receiving and now the dragon card this is again what it was that i was saying you need to step into your power and your strength breathe fire and passion and energy and life into the things that is that you've been um, manifesting and then also this is from this card is from the wild offering oracle 
what is it that they need to hear right now for the solar eclipse this reading is giving me so much life oh my god see i'm done look abundance and being enough abundance and being enough you have to realize this is so many of you guys literally are stepping into your power that's what is being disrupted here that is ultimately what is being disrupted some of you guys are so scared of change and change is the best thing that could ever happen to you because you will actually receive what it is that you deserve that's what's being disrupted is the fact that especially with uranus moving to the sign of taurus this is a disruption and a breakdown for like you tapping into a safe that's the thing taurus it, I don't want to say that it hoards, but it has value. It has abundance. It has luxury there. It has earthy, wealthy um, things that would nourish you and make your experience here on, on life so in in life so much better. But Uranus sitting here says you need to tap into this. This is a well. There is abundance underneath the surface. You need to ask for it, and you have to have the strength and the power to stand up for yourself and to call it out and say, look, I deserve more than this. And when you do it, you're gonna do it respectfully. I don't see you guys being rude. I just see you being like, I, I am enough. Like I'm worth this. I know you know that I'm worth this. That's why you're holding on to it. That's why you're sneaking away and hiding it so much. Because if I got a whiff that you have more to give and you know I asked for it, you would have, and you would almost be obligated to give it to me because that's how much my value is. So you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there are plenty more videos where this came from. Um, I really want to give you guys all of my love and speak a blessing over your life. I know that 2019 has been intense for a lot of people. It was intense for me. But what I will say and what I want to point our attention to is the fact that I truly feel like we did it, we did it together. Um, so thank you so much for your support of me, of the YouTube channel, but also of each other because I'm watching you guys make connections down in the comments. I'm watching you share your experiences. I know that we are, some of us, a good portion of us are introverted and to be able to connect and read other people's experiences helps us to feel not so alone and helps us along in our own journey. So I want to encourage you to do that. I will say that for the numbers that of people that are following my or subscribe to my YouTube channel and following me on Instagram or and see these videos, the, the numbers don't even make sense with the amount of love and support. If you think about it, with the amount of people that are seeing it, there should be more hate, but there is there is not hate. You know, have you noticed that yet? Like I've noticed it, that there's all this love and support coming from each and every single one of you. And that is because I have set the intention that these messages, these videos, see who needs to see it, that whoever receives this message, that they don't abuse it, that it brings them to their highest version of themselves and helps them to evolve and helps the message be a positive experience to them, that helps guide them. And I feel like you guys, the energy has really been all of 2019 I have not received any hate like I really have not received hate I have the Bahati vibe tribe has not received hate and it's all because of the intention of every single one of you if you're watching this video your heart is pure your intentions are pure and your will is pure and I just want to I want to thank you for that for even you know working on yourself so much that we're all aligning because as above you know as above so below but we're all connected we're all a mirror image of each other and it just feels really good to have us you know what i mean it feels really good to have us so i, I had to say that and just thank you guys for an amazing year 2019 was a hard year but it was an amazing year and i feel like 2020 is gonna be way better way better <laughs> i'll say that but we'll talk about that when we enter into 2020 because you guys know i'm always here shuffling cards i'm always here pulling charts and we're always here talking about it all right i'll see you guys in my next video bye